Mr. Holgren. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for being here. Uh, a couple questions, uh, Mr. Rinaldi. Uh, last week I took a tour of the en route center in Chicago, uh, which, as you know, handles all the high altitude air traffic over Illinois and much of the Great Lakes region. I learned a lot about uh, ERAM, uh, the new automation platform that's being installed at the facility and other en route facilities across the country. It's the en route automation modernization. I was surprised to learn uh, that the Chicago Center will have the system installed ahead of schedule and possibly under budget due mainly to the high level of collaboration between controllers, uh, management, and the, faci uh, the uh, facility. And uh, as the president of the Controllers Union, I wonder what your thoughts are on that, how it's going, uh, and also to see other ways that we could model after this collaboration across the system. Thank you for the question, sir. Uh, ERAM is a very important project. It is actually, uh, to steal David Grizzle's line, it is the chassis in which we're going to bolt on many of the uh, new technologies uh, for next gen, uh, which is living proof that you don't need to build a new building to do next gen. You actually could put ERAM into the current buildings. Uh, collaboration in a lot of facilities are, is going very well. And some facilities, not so well, and we're addressing them uh, at the higher level. Uh, and trying to uh, mentor and, and give them some interest-based uh, collaboration tools so they can work together at the lower level. And, and we believe, David Grizzle and myself believe, that once we get the local levels working as we have in Chicago uh, Tower and Center and Tracon in that area, everyone seems to be working on the same page. It's, it's better for everybody. It's quite, it saves money for the taxpayers, and it runs a, a seamless operation, safe operation. Yeah, I was really struck with, again, a facility that I think they said is 50 years old, the building, um, and yet uh, cutting edge, um, real positive feel as I went in there. I uh, was very impressed uh, just with the work that was going, but also the incredible collaboration between all the parties. I, I really do think it's a model of uh, how it should be run. Mr. Grizzle, I wonder if any potential facility cons uh, consolidation uh, should certainly take into account user and public input. wondered how the FAA will ensure the user community and public have that opportunity uh, to be heard. And I wonder if you could just walk through the process for us of how that will happen. Sure. The reality about collaboration that is frequently missed is that collaboration requires that your planning horizon be enlarged. You can't do collaboration quickly. And collaboration most frequently fails because adequate time for collaborating has not been provided in your process. And so as we are working through our planning process for doing consolidations, we are making sure that we create this time for collaboration with the different stakeholders that you mentioned. So an important part of that will not only giving, be giving them notice of, of our tentative decision, but then giving them an opportunity to be able to compile their insights about that decision, our to receive them, and then for, their to, for them to hear what our response will be. And so it will elongate the total time that it will take us to make these decisions, but again, collaboration takes time. And I'm sure the fact of uh CRs and kicking FAA authorizations down the road 20-some uh, times doesn't help uh, in um, that predictability of timing. So we've got to do our part up here, I know, as well. Um, I've heard concerns from some stakeholders, uh, Mr. Grizzle, that uh, the FAA has conducted partial cost analyses uh, with a bias towards consolidation, thereby casting doubt on the ob objectivity of the FAA's decision, uh, the Boys Trade Con consolidation, for example. Uh, the Inspector General has echoed many of these concerns. Will the FAA complete consolidations of this type without a transparent accounting, or will the transparent accounting be there? As I said earlier, that we are currently looking at consolidations without a bias in favor or against consolidation. We believe that in many instances it is exactly the right thing to do for the airspace and for the economics, and in other cases it's not. And we intend to look at each decision individually. I think more importantly, we're going to do a far more thorough job of retrospectively looking at the consolidations that we do complete to assure that they have achieved the objectives we set out for them. We're going to see, did we bring them in on schedule? Did we bring them in on budget with particular attention to transition expenses, which tells you whether the consolidation you did was done cost effectively? 
Have you achieved the operating costs that you expected to achieve? Have you, in fact, produced a more efficient airspace? And finally, what's your employee satisfaction? I see my time has run out. Thank you very much. I yield back.